Hey guys, Zongetsu 134 here, bringing you another My Hero Academia review. So before we get started, I just want to let you guys know I'm going to be uh, doing the Kamen Rider Zio series as a bi-weekly. I'm going to do each, um, since each episode seems to be a two-parter, um, I'm going to do each episode, or each, each two-parter together as one single review, just because I think I'll have more to talk about, and it'll be easier just to explain the plot of the, of the two-part story arc, since it's, it just seems easier that way for me, and I'll have more to talk about. Um, I'm still not going to be doing the point fives as their own thing. The point fives will probably be talked about at the beginning of the episode, <clears throat> or of the beginning of the, of uh, the vlog, where I'm more or less just going to probably what they're explaining about the arc anyways, just because nine times out of ten, they seem to just be repeat, like, explaining stuff that doesn't need to be explained in them. Um, so anyway, uh, in this episode of, uh, oh yeah, and also, sorry, I almost forgot, I've, I've had to redo this one because I got interrupted. Um, the, I will be doing a special review the 29th, um, that will be my review of My Hero Academia, the movie, Two Heroes. Um, that's coming out, um, me and some of my friends are gonna be going, are gonna be going, and we're gonna review it after, uh, we finish with the, finish with the film. That's gonna be my friends Cody and Titus, you may remember them from my Avengers Infinity War vlog. Um, you may also remember Titus from my, my Jurassic Park, uh, or Jurassic World, rather, Fallen Kingdom v uh, vlogs which I had to do in two parts, because I also messed up the recording there. Um, but yeah, we're going to go, we're going to review it. Um, we'll be watching the dub version, not the subbed, which kind of sucks for me. I I kind of prefer watching stuff subbed first a lot of the times, just because it doesn't feel like they lose any sort of Japanese meaning to, this, to, to it when they translate it into American, just because with text it seems to keep it mainly intact. Um, not... Not always can everything be be kept in translation, but it it's much less lost in translation than dubs. Granted, dubs are a lot better than they used to be, but in summary, I just I like to watch it sub. But it, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy watching it anyways because I love the dub. I mean, Christopher Sabat is <laughs> has all my is fun to watch no matter what, and I like the voices of everyone, uh, especially Bakugo. <laughs> I usually I think Bakugo is probably funnier in the English just because of the the fact that, like, he has a bit more range than just constant screaming or, like, reserve, reserve screaming. I, I feel like Bakugo is more grumbly in the English than he is uh, in the Japanese, where he just seems to be constantly screaming. <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> let's get the actual episode, Season for Encounters. So the episode opens with the twice backstory that was originally in the manga shown mainly... Um, alongside, uh, All Might versus, uh, going to speak with All for One and Tartarus, which comes at the very end of the original Hero License Exam, and it's sort of a cool-down period between the, the arc, the last arc, and going into the big fight between Midoriya and Bakugo, uh, which <sighs> actually happened before, after this, but technically it was happening concurrently. <clears throat> um, here it's just its own thing. So as not to confu be confusing about, or have like a random narrator go like, hey, this is what's happening <clears throat> during the Provincial Hero License exam arc. Which makes sense to me because of the fact that for the most part this show is told in backstory because this is Midoriya telling us the story of how he became the world's greatest hero. <clears throat> and he wouldn't know any of the stuff that happened with Twice. So more or less it has to kind of be its own thing. <clears throat> uh, for it, Especially since... I don't think Midoriya ever does any sort of narration or really brings anything up about what's going on until we get to the, he the second half of the episode where it's about Midoriya's last, <clears throat> um, or about Midoriya's time in, in lockdown, as well as introducing, uh, stuff we'll be seeing in the next season <clears throat> during the second internship arc and, <clears throat> the overhaul arc in general, as this is going to be called. Um, in fact, this is actually um, our first introduction to the new villains of uh, next season, Overhaul, and his uh, compatriots, the Eight Precepts of Death. So, we get into uh, Twice's backstory. In fact, we like for the most part, you don't know it's Twice until about, uh, I want to say like a quarter way into the episode. 
Um, you get hints since he's constantly at odds with himself, much like how Twice was during the camp arc, as he would constantly say one thing and then he would counteract <clears throat> what the other was saying. Like, when they want him to untie Bakugo, he's like, no way! I'll do it. <laughs> um, and we find out why. It's not like it's just some sort of weird verbal tick he does. It's literally um, insanity brought on by his quirk. Um, and then, to be fair, there's a lot of underlying ideas that, like, some quirks are legitimately so um, <clears throat> bizarre or odd that they can sometimes, like, de um, affect someone's mental faculties. In Twice's case, he was um, apparently very lazy in his younger years, and so he would constantly just use his quirk to create clones of himself, which is his quirk is... And in fact, his quirk is actually explained much further here. His quirk is literally twice. It allows him to duplicate things. Um, and in fact, his duplicates can also duplicate themselves. So he used his duplicates to basically do everything for him, and in his words, he's, he was the king. Basically, he didn't do anything, and every, all the other twices were his subjects. However, like, the twice... All the, the twice clones have their own personality, and eventually they got sick and tired of the original twice being the one that, well, got to do nothing while they did all the stuff he didn't want to do. And so, as he states, he spent, like, I think a week and a half fighting with all the other twice clones until, basically, they killed each other except for the, the original twice. Twice basically suffers from a, a psychological problem in that... And I, I, I don't know what the psychological problem is, since why I'm just saying a psychological disorder of some sort, in which... Because he's not, sh because of all the the clones fighting with him, killing each other, he's not entirely sure if he's the right one. So there's always this nagging doubt in the back of his head, which manifests itself as something of a split personality. And, um, is if he's really real or not? Um, which is he's he, he manages for the most part, I think, mainly by. Basically smoking. I think it's more or less he tries to relax his nerves by smoking. Um, because I, there, there isn't a lot of people that say, you know, they smoke to de-stress. Um, as well as... Uh, con as well as constantly keeping his twice co uh, mask on him. As it seems to be um, a, way, a way to hide his own face. Like, I, he, he seems to more identify with the mask than his own personal face. Because to him, that face could not be real. It, it's... It's, it could be fake, he could be false, but the mask is real. That's, like, the true twice. And while he still technically has the two ar um, arguing voices, he seems to be able to keep himself together better. Uh, we see this mo uh, mainly when Twice is talking with... Um, I forget his name, but he's more or less the guy that, like, the League of Villains go to to get uh, new recruits and weapons and other things through the black market. Um, he starts to lose control of himself, and even the guy who's, who's talking with him is like, oh, you're having a... You're having a hard time. Uh, I think you'll. I'll need to let you go while you're dealing with that. And basically, it seems like Twice is going to have like a mental breakdown until he gets the mask on. And it seems to like soothe him a little bit that he's able to like at least keep his thoughts going. Um, and mainly, this is just here to a show uh, why Twice is the way he is, and also kind of to get an idea of why the League of Villains a are doing what they're doing, and b what they've been doing since. Um, all for, all for one's defeat and all might's retirement mainly recruiting new villains as well as seeing what what's happening is causing is doing to affect society um we're mainly seeing that um people have lost faith in heroes a little bit as well as the fact that villains are now more willing to work together in teams after the league of villains showed how much um they were capable of doing uh we see this mainly in the the group of thugs that steals a simple a simple AT, uh, simple cash till from um, a convenience store, calling themselves the Reservoir Dogs. And we also see that a little bit in Overhaul's gang and that they more or less kill the villains that were driving away. Um, it's not exactly clear what Quirks did it. I think it's mainly supposed to imply that it was Overhaul who did it. Um, basically it shows the the truck had been wrecked and that someone's face has been fused with one of the car tires, which is, I was like, like, I didn't expect to see that sort of thing when I read it in the manga. Like, just because of the fact that, like, up until that point, while there was violence in My Hero Academia, it was mainly just, you know, bloodletting and, like, cuts and stab wounds and, like, 
you know, the stuff, like, the, the most violently gory things that we saw were some of the stuff Stain did, which was stabbing and cutting people, and uh, Aizawa's wounds at the hands of Nomu. You know, we never saw someone get, like, mutilated and, like, fused to something. Uh, which is what why twice decides that he, he should get these guys to help to join uh, forces with uh, the League of Villains. Which I don't think we're probably going to see much of after this, because I think the next episode is going to be purely dedicated to the other characters introduced into the arc. Um, so we pr it's probably going to be the only the only small bits we're going to see of overhauling the eight precepts, which is fine because like in the in the second season we only really got like a, a few a few minutes of Dobby and Toga. Um, we weren't even introduced to muscular uh, Spinner twice and uh compress uh mr compress until like the episode they were introduced um and so basically we see the fact that there is more of a rise in villainy um the fact that the current pillar of peace and the number one hero endeavor a lot of people can't trust because he's he's so um antithesis such an antithesis to what other heroes are like and and just an antithesis in all to all might in general he's rude he's brash he'll constantly cause more damage and violence sometimes than the villains he's going up against just because he can let loose a vicious a vicious mean streak to him um so in that regards um all my like it's it's why all might or why like the beginning we're seeing the beginnings of losing all might really has affected society um it's happening very slowly but it it feels like it's going to soon erupt uh, erupt and there's going to be much more dangers to this world um it's also why the government's trying to work more on getting as many heroes as they can so they can create hero teams and a much more capable hero force in case the villains actually do become much more capable of what they're doing instead of just being a bunch of petty thieves and crooks that feel they can get away with stealing stuff because all might's not around um, like you get a feeling that this is just the beginning of a much bigger storm. Um, this is actually brought up even more when Principal Nezu uh, talks to the talks to all the rest of the cast as we see them, uh, actually going to the introduct. In, um, I think what's called is the introduct. Uh, the opening ceremony. Um, basically, when school when schools in Japan like. Uh, start back up they have a opening ceremony where basically you know we're, we're reopening the school it's a new season or it's a new year and we're going to or or like a new semester rather because this is um te this is technically the second semester of that year so like this is the first this is class 1a's second semester of their first year which is crazy to think of that all this stuff is like we've had two seasons and that was one semester <laughs> um so now we're entering the second semester. Um, he brings up stuff like how, like, second years and third years have actual um, um, internships instead of just being, like, like the internships that the first years had where they basically... It's basically just a job shadow where they're more there just to watch and see what a typical day in a superhero or a superhero's life is like, you know, what, what sort of things they do, maybe doing a little bit of sparring or training and patrolling, but basically they're just there to learn. Um, once you have a provincial hero license exam, you're allowed to actually do actual heroic work, albeit you have to be supervised. Like, you won't get in trouble if you're doing it on your own, but it's much pref more preferred that you, that you're supervised when you do it. Um, and that, you know, whoever's responsible for you will probably take a little bit of, a little bit of flack if you do something outrageous. But it, it but like I said, it, it, it more or less says that you're allowed to defend yourself, and if you do see a villain, like, if you see, like, a petty mugger, you're allowed to apprehend them. It's not like, um, but, like, if you're going up against bigger threats, like maybe the Mafia or the Yakuza, you're gonna want some supervision because you're just provincial heroes. Um, this is also, we get to see a bit more of Class 1B, particularly the foreign exchange student in there. I forget her full name, but I know her name, her first name is Pony, which is... Um, fitting since her quirk is in fact pony, although she has horns. I, I don't know any horse that has horns. I'm not entirely sure what that's about, but it's whatever. Quirks are weird. Um, 
And so basically, Nezu brings up the uh, what the rest of the cast will be doing once um, once we we start the next season, which is of course that they're going to get internships. Um, we also get an introduction to the UA Big Three, who are the top three top three third years, and more or less the the ones that have the most potential to become heroes right out of right out of school. Um, Mirio Togata, and I forget the other two's names. Mirio is more or less the most important one. He's the fan favorite of the three. Um, we really, and, and in fact, this is where we actually get him voiced for the first time. He really doesn't do much, but it's more or less his introduction. The other two aren't really introduced at the end of, at the end of the episode. They're more or less just brought in, and the two of them are there to, um basically show off like who we'll be talking to in the next in the next series season and like i said they're they're mainly there to to be like hey this is like the big three these are the ones who are the most capable and the most heroic of the three and mirio is in fact like i think even higher than the two like he's the one that's like the strongest of the three of them um which we don't get to see a lot of we mainly get to see him showing off his quirk but even then he doesn't really explain it I, next episode they're going to explain his quirk i'm pretty sure um, because I think the next episode is where, oh, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. I'm not going to spoil too much now. Um, and so basically, um, we see the, we see that and the girl, the female member of the big three is like, Hey, did you hear that class one, a had a couple that were, they got into a big fight before the school year began. And so they're, um, they're on house arrest and this interests, uh, Mirio, and he decides to go uh, check uh, check these two out, which he never. I don't think he runs. In, he doesn't run into Bakugo. He only runs into Midoriya, who's taking trash out. Um, and in fact, this is kind of like I, you've noticed. I've talked mainly, um, mostly about what's everyone else. Midoriya really isn't brought up in this episode. In fact, Midoriya is really only talked about before they go to the opening ceremony and after, where he finds out that like. Um, they've, they've had a bunch of new classes and they've learned about, um, internships and stuff. Um, and he's not actually not allowed to learn about it until he's off of house arrest. And in fact, like Ida even like states that, which I will admit Ida kind of frustrates me here. Like I get that, like he's upset with Midoriya for acting the way he did, but let's be honest. I don't know why a lot of them are as like kind of rude to Midoriya, like, just because of the fact that like he really only did it because he felt like it would help Bakugo. Like, he still should be in trouble, but, like, let's be honest, it was mainly Bakugo's fault that that happened. Not Midoriya's, but that's whatever. Um, and so Midoriya meets uh, Mirio for a few moments where he uh, tells him where the trash bins are, and we, he shows off his quirk, mainly in the fact that his face appears in places... Um, it's not like he's, like, putting, like, it's some sort of weird thing where he can teleport his face or something. It, it, it's, like, it'll be explained. Um, more or less, it, it's, it's basically just implied that he has some sort of, like, I guess, uh, phasing quirk. Where like, like kind of like Kitty Pride from the X-Men where he can, like, he can, like, turn himself intangible and move through solid objects like a ghost. Um, but that's more or less just what you can get by looking at the, um... By watching the episode, they'll explain it a lot more uh, when they actually show off his quirk uh, more in combat. Um, and so, yeah, basically, this is all pretty much um, Midori's part is more just set up for what he'll be doing in this arc. That of he feels he needs to get stronger, especially with the fact that it, that thanks to these three days, he feels like he's kind of been left behind. Um, as well as just talking about um, his need to develop shoot style more. Um, mainly because during his fight with Bakugo, he actually had to use his arms. Um, and even with just being able to increase the potency of, um, one for all, even if he go, like, it's only a 3% increase. Like if he goes any wilder than the, th than 8%, he's still going to end up injuring himself. So he needs to hurry up and actually increase the, the percentage much faster, which he'll get there. He'll get there. Um, in fact, I think next season he'll, if not start, if not at least start, um, well, by the end of the, the season, I think really show that he's, he's starting to grow a lot faster. Um, I feel a lot of the problem is in my opinion, like they're constantly training his body. In my opinion, his body needs to be trained to use, um, 
one for all full calling as a training device where he, the, where he constantly like trains his body while using it so that his muscles develop to use that percentage so that when he increases the percentage a little bit his body won't feel as much kickback and because because of that he can train in higher percentages and actually make it so that his those percentages will enhance his muscles so that they can handle the handle it without taking huge knockback like if he's at five percent like because it's a constant use of five percent his body could handle like like slightly increasing it to six percent and so on and so forth like he could arguably increase it like another three percent and go to eleven percent um and start getting into the double digits um but like i said he has a ways to go but he's learning he's definitely getting there um and mainly we see that him working out his arms just to see make sure he didn't damage them more by using that punch and it, it and basically, I, it makes sense that he didn't, because the whole reason his arms were like that was because he kept using them even while, A, they were broken, and B, because uh, because of his urge to protect Coda, his adrenaline shut off his body's natural pain receptors, as well as turning off the limiters that your body naturally has so that you only use about 80% of your own natural strength. Which he's not... Which he didn't do against Bakugo. He was more or less going slightly beyond his limits, and that's not as bad. It's when you when you do, like, like 110%. He was more doing, like, 85%. Like, it, I, feel, I feel like it's silly that Midoriya worried that much about his arms, because he threw one punch. It's not like he, he was constantly using his fists. He was mainly relying on kick style, on shoot style and his legs. So it's not... And not only that... It makes sense that he has to at least make sure that his arms can be used in case he can't use his legs. And he's going to get um, a way to, to deal with that. Um, so yeah. And so basically the whole episode ends with that. With Midoriya being allowed back into class because he only had three days with Bakugo has four. And we get to see the introduction of the big three fully. Where we only saw really the backs of their heads during the ceremony and part of Mirio's face when he talks to Midoriya, but here we see the big three in their full uh, full school clothes. And that's where the episode ends. Um, so yeah, episode 24 is not bad. It's more or less just, an in, just a kind of cool down episode, and more or less just a preview of things to come in season four. Um, much like how the episode, um, much like how the last episode of season two was an, an, an a hint of things to come in season three. Although here it's going to be two episodes where we're going to see more hints of what's to come in season two, uh, season four. Um, although to be fair, the next episode, I, I argue is more kind of just a, a, an episode to show off how the kids have grown and what lies beyond their growth and how, it, and basically it's a way of saying, you know, they're going to continue to grow and we're going to see more of that in season four. Um, it's not a bad episode. I think the twice stuff is more interesting than the end of the episode where we see, like, where we see Midoriya's house arrest as well as just kind of being about the beginning of the next school year. It's not bad. I just think it's it's kind of a cool-down episode. And uh, and seeing as how the movie's coming out, I don't think a lot of people are going to remember this episode. Um, I feel like that's going to be the same that could be said about the next episode. I think it's just kind of a cool-down episode. Um, overall, though, I, I really do think, I think it's a fine episode. I, I liked seeing Twice's backstory. I like, I like seeing Overhaul and the Eight Precepts, um, animated, and overall I just liked seeing, um, seeing what's to come. So guys, that's gonna be, um, it for my new, uh, um, for my, for my My Hero Academia Season 3 Episode 24 review. Um, like I said, look forward to Kamen Rider Zio tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be doing Episodes 3 and 4, and... I uh, look forward to when I do the movie review. So until then, guys, I'm Zongetsu134. I shaved my mustache. <laughs> Take care.